Hello YouTube. Today I'll be showing you a Gorilla AKH Slayer Guide. And so these new Slayer creatures are classified as Devoured Souls. They're located in the Sophonum Slayer Dungeon. So we'll just get into the requirements and the location of how to get there. So first, it requires level 113 Slayer to kill them. So yeah, we do have 120 Slayer for anyone who doesn't know. This requires a new Menaphos quest called Jack of Spades. The fastest way to get there is by using the Sophonum Dungeon Teleport Tablet. This is an untradeable tablet, and you can unlock this ability to craft them by having Tier 4 reputation in any district on Menaphos. You craft this in your player own house, with 2 Law Runes and 1 Soft Clay. The other alternative to get there fast is by the Max Guild Skill Portal to the Luminous Divination Spot. Then you want to run north and a little west. The easiest and the most practical way to get there with people who don't have those requirements is just go to the Menaphos Lodestone, then run east and talk to the guard to cross the bridge, and run a little south from the end of the bridge until you see the dungeon. So now that you're in the dungeon, if you enter for the first time, you want to go to the northeast room, then climb down the ladder. You're going to have to run north and all the way around to the east side, then south again. And when you see another bridge, run a little to your west. And as you keep running south until you see a bridge, run a little to your west instead of crossing the bridge. And that way you can unlock a shortcut, which I highly suggest you unlock. You basically just go to the pile of rocks, then click remove. And anytime you want to go to this place from now on, just go to the southeast corner from the start of the dungeon and then climb down the chasm. So here are the mechanics of Gorilla AKH. They're very easy to kill, but they're very hard if you get piled. Their damage is really really strong, but they hit pretty inaccurately. Now they also have a special attack that happens randomly. And so what it will do is pump its chest first, and then slam the ground three times. If all three hits successfully land on you, you'll then be stunned for 3 seconds. This can be avoided if you use anticipation before, or you just use freedom after the stun. Running away a couple of squares also avoids the stun. Because of this, they can deal a lot of damage to you in a matter of seconds. So here's my equipment setup. I'm using melee because of Scrimshaw Vampirism, because that way you can sustain your damage. So first, I have the Noxious Scythe. And Dragon Ratter Lance can be an okay alternative. The perks I have are Precise 5 and Aftershock 3. Then I have the full Slayer Helmet, although the Corrupted Slayer Helmet actually is nicer. The body I have is Torva Plate Body, and the perks I use are Enhanced Devoted 3 and Crackling 3. The Enhanced Devoted perk is really going to help here, especially given that they do a lot of rapid attacks. Then I have the Bandos Plate Legs, or you can maybe use Torva instead if you're struggling defensively. You don't really need much defense anyways after this. And yeah, the perks I use are Genocidal and Biting 2 plus Mobile. Then I have Bandos Gloves, but you can use Death Touch Bracelet for slightly more DPS by deflecting their attacks. I don't really like the cost of it because the Onyxes are fairly expensive. And then I also have Bandos Boots, but you can use Silverhawk Boots if you want Agility XP. The ring I have is the Leviathan Ring, and really I use this as a defensive bonus. Otherwise, if you don't really want that, or you don't have this, then just use Luck of the Dwarves or just Surgeon's Ring works fine. The amulet I have is Amulet of Souls, and because they hit very hard and rapid, and they can actually stun you, having this amulet can really soak the damage for you. And the very most important thing to have is Scrimshaw of Vampirism. I strongly strongly recommend this, because like I said, they hit very hard, and because you're AoEing a lot, it really helps keep your HP almost full. So yeah, this is pretty much your main healing source. And then I also have Vampirism or Penance Aura, this is which is for extra healing. And then I have Elf City Quiver, and that is for prayer bonus. So here's my inventory setup. I have an Aggression Potion. Then I have Holy Overloads, Weapon Poison++, plus plus, Replenishment Potions, and I bring a few Prayer Potions. You may want to bring some emergency food just in case. As for the familiar I'm actually using, it's a steel titan pouch with scrolls. Otherwise demon brawlers are also nice as well for AoE. Now I highly highly suggest you use combat familiars here, cause you can help kill them fast to reduce the stun chance. 
You don't really need a pack yak or legendary pet because the drops come in a chest. Now the item you must have in your inventory is called the Feather of Matt. And you buy this from the NPC outside the Sophonum Slayer dungeon for 1.5k GP. Otherwise you can get this from the Shifting Tombs minigame or you can just buy from other players. The stock on the NPC outside the Sophonum Slayer dungeon is usually enough to last you a full task. I do also suggest that if you do have tier 7 reputation overall in Menefus, there's a chance that you can save a feather each kill. So really, it does save you quite a bit of money of the cost. Then I have Charming Imp, which is my Slayer tool belt. The prayers I have are Turmoil, or you can use a tier 99 prayer, but I don't have that. Now, very importantly, you want to have Deflect Melee, because Soul Split won't heal you back enough damage. So for my action bar, I have Cleave on the first slot. And then you want to follow the rest of the basics on my action bar for revolution. Make sure you anticipate as often as possible, because stunning happens very very often. And always use freedom when you get stunned. Tuska's Wrath can also be put on the side, just in case you need a quick extra DPS. Or you can just use this as an instant critical hit for the Meteor Strike Adrenaline effect. And for thresholds, I have Hurricane and Quake. I highly highly suggest you use Devotion as often as possible since they can quickly DPS you rapidly all of a sudden. And for the ultimate, the only one I use is Meteor Strike. Don't use Berserk here because it's really really dangerous. Especially when there's a chance that you could get stunned. So here's my strategy. I first start in the middle of this place where there are most of the spawns and they can cluster. This requires the least amount of movement. And you want to use AoE abilities as often as possible. And don't forget, always anticipate as well. Now I know it can be really hard to see their stun under a huge pile, so that's why anticipate helps a lot, even if you think they're not going to stun you. And always freedom when you get stunned. Sometimes when you know they're doing their stun, you can try moving a little to avoid the stun. And yeah, they're still going to follow you, so you won't lose too much AoE cluster. It really saves you the need to use freedom at a specifically given time. And yeah, do not forget, you always want to use devotion because you never know when you're going to get piled and hit hard. And like I said, never ever use berserk because of this unless you have spare adrenaline because you generally won't have a lot of spare adrenaline to use. Alright, so I'm going to get into the drops. The drops are automatically collected to any chests at the Slayer dungeon at any time. The key to crossing corrupted gems and charms are not going to be included in the chest, so you gotta pick them up yourself. And if you die here, you must pay a small percentage of the value of the chest in order to reclaim it. Otherwise, the drops are all forfeited. For this chest, you can toggle whether you get drops manually or whether it can auto-collect to the chest. And if you do get the drops manually, you'll get 20% chance to get double the drops, which can be really helpful but it's not really worth it honestly because these drops aren't that great. So factoring in the costs of the feathers and the scrimshaw, this would get you a measly under 1 mil GP per hour. I mean in one hour you can get 2.8 mil in raw drops, but because of the cost of feathers and the scrimshaw, yeah this isn't gonna be really good profit. By the way, this also excludes the chance of getting a rare key to crossings or the corrupt gems. I'm not sure about the charm drop rates here so I can't really say much here. So overall in 14 minutes, I killed 182 of these Gorilla AKH. Projecting this to a full hour, this would give you 780 kills per hour, 677k melee combat XP per hour, 580k Slayer XP per hour, and the reputation you get is 9 reputation per kill. This would give you 7k reputation per hour. Although you do get the 5% Menaphos early bonus XP, I didn't include this in this calculation. So really, this is an amazing task for Slayer XP. It's decent combat XP, but really the profit does suck for such high requirements unless you get Key of Crossing or the Corrupted Gems. But yeah, overall it's a pretty good task to prefer. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask.